When I was around seven years old, my mom, uh, she was doing my hair, I believe, we were sitting in the living room, and she said to me, you know, because you're black and because you're Muslim and because you're a girl, you have these three things working against you in the world, and you're gonna have to work three times as hard um, to be accepted in the world. This book is for every person who holds white privilege because every person who holds white privilege is complicit in white supremacy. You get to show up in your full humanity. You get to create a world where everybody's treated with their full humanity. You get to be a good ancestor. You get to leave the world in a better place than what you found it. I was really aware of my difference from an early age. So every week I was reminded you, you don't fit in. The majority of the people are like this, but you are black and you are Muslim and you don't take part in what everyone else is doing. It was a turning point and every time I think about it, I still get that same feeling of sort of like shivers on my skin because I remember seeing the images of the angry white men marching in Charlottesville holding the torches and the look of hate in their eyes and I made this connection that the hatred that was in their eyes is specifically for people who look like me and I'm just making this connection now but it was this moment of remembering what my mother had said to me and really realizing she was right and so I published this piece um, called I Need to Talk to Spiritual White Women About White Supremacy. And I really honestly thought it would only reach the small community that I'd been cultivating over time, about 400 email subscribers, and it went viral to my big surprise. Almost a year later, you know, I was lying in bed one night trying to fall asleep and I couldn't fall asleep and I started thinking about how different the conversation was now and began writing this thing on my phone at 2 a.m. in the morning that became the, the full challenge essentially in one night um, and right before going to sleep an hour later said tomorrow we, we start this 28-day journey we're going to explore what have you learned about you and white supremacy. And so it leads people through this journey, this sequence of understanding that you might have heard the words white privilege or white fragility, you don't know what they mean. And for each day I explained, what does this thing mean? What does it look like? And then some prompting, reflective journaling questions around how that shows up for them. To journal through it is to actually excavate everything from inside of you. White supremacy is the system of oppression, but sometimes when we think about it as a system, it's almost separate from us, like there's a distance, like I get it, it's out there, but I'm me, and I'm not a part of that. And what this work helps people to do is understand how you are in the system, you are part of the system, the system is inside of you, without you even knowing it. I do talk about right before you begin the work explaining that this isn't you know, a self-development program where you're going to get a prize at the end and you're going to feel really good about yourself and the aim is not to kind of affirm that yes, you are a good white person. This work is hard. You're not going to feel good while you do it. But what I really try to speak to is what is the bigger payoff here? The bigger payoff is you get to leave the world in a better place than what you found it. What I want is for this to be such a normal part of our cultural lexicon and conversation that to not be able to have this conversation would really make you outdated. Wow. <gasps> That's Mama's book. It is my honor and privilege to introduce you to the author, speaker, activist, Layla Saad. The feedback that I got that kept me going actually mainly came from black women. Seeing the way that so many black women felt liberated hearing it, it was like, we're not imagining it. This is real. This is really how they feel about us or think about us, and that now gives me permission to just be who I am because I know I'm not imagining it. We are in a really interesting time of history, um, and we are right on the cusp of 
either being able to really change the way things go or continue down a very scary path. And so I hope that that urgency that people are feeling now are, is, is channeled into action, into doing the work.